Over the past five decades, Pierre Boulez has evolved from a musical radical to a statesman of the post-war classical music scene. He came to international prominence as a composer with his piece, La Marteau Sans Met, in 1955. He later took up the baton and became conductor of both the New York Philharmonic and the BBC Symphony Orchestra. In 1976, he founded the ensemble Intercontemporary, in which he continues to conduct today. Its repertoire is aimed at promoting the music of our time, a goal which has defined his very career. Currently, he is the 1999-2000 Richard and Barbara Debs Composers Chair at Carnegie Hall. I am pleased to have him here. Welcome. Thank Welcome. you. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, I said statesman. It is, for most of us who know about your career, a journey that has taken you from very interesting and provocative opinions and ideas at the beginning to wherever you are today. Describe how you see this evolution in a career for, as composer, conductor, and, and your ideas about what ought to be on our agenda in the world of music. I think I was always interested in the music of my time. Uh, and I find, you know, people who are not interested in music of uh, their time, I don't understand them really, because uh, that's much more interesting to be part of this century than just to repeat the experiences of other centuries. Although I am also aware of the history of music, and I am really, I love history of music, but I cannot really uh, restrict myself to that. And therefore, as I mean, you know, when you are uh, very young, as I, mean, uh, as I was in 45, 46, uh, <laughs> when I was 21, 22, so I needed to have um, to express my opinions against the establishment who did not want to reconsider the old ideas. And then progressively, uh, you are showing your abilities, and uh, not only as a composer, but also as a conductor. And then progressively, the institutions ask you to take the responsibility and then that the change of attitude, if you are asked to take your responsibility, you have to. And you have to be, you know, convinced and to convince other people. Therefore, when I was asked exactly 30 years ago to um, be the director of the New York Philharmonic, it was not at all simple. Because, uh, you know, Bernstein was uh, before me, yes. so uh, really a very strong personality, very well liked uh, uh, in this city and in this country. So uh, you are always, you know, the new one uh, will destroy everything. And I did not destroy anything, but I was uh, making people aware of how I consider things generally. And I put uh, new works especially and that was very uh, strange because uh, first, of course, there was a shock. So, I mean, and uh, if I would have said, well, there is a shock, I don't continue, I would have not been faithful to myself. Well, you could argue also that it is the, you know, that it is the obligation of the artist to tell the truth as he or she sees it. Yes, uh, and uh, you know, when you, when you compare, for instance, to painting, to the arts generally, as a museum has changed enormously. I remember also the MoMA, the Guggenheim, for sure. instance. I mean, that's really, uh, they, they do that constantly, and they are not criticized for that on the contrary. They are praised for that. And why institutions like the Philharmonic should stay behind the time? You know, it is fascinating to me. Yes. I mean, it is absolutely true. If you look at architecture, it has gone from one time to another. If yes. you look at painting, it's gone from one time to another, you know, from one age to another, from one period to another. But in music, there is still this extraordinary inertia. Inertia. Yes. And, uh, you know, also I think that's generally, but I've said that I repeat myself sometimes yeah. because uh, the truth is always, you know, uh, yeah. the same. But uh, institutions are too rigid in music. Uh, they want to serve the same menu to everybody. And then, of course, as I mean, if uh, people are pleased with uh, historical works, they are not pleased with new works. And people who want to hear new works, to listen to new music, they say, well, we have already uh, heard the repertoire very much, so we don't need that anymore. Mm -hmm. And I think we, uh, you know, what I try to do in New York, for instance, that to have dif different uh, type of, uh, of concerts. For instance, contemporary music, new music, I was giving that in the uh, downtown. Uh, first in the, in the university and then I mean, 
uh, in uh, auditorium, different with the smaller groups, with uh, smaller audiences also. But they, they came to listen to the new works. And then, also, I mean, uh, when the works were very good, we were repeating them uh, in uh, the main hall. Or to have at the end of the season what I call the rug concerts, where very informal yeah. for young people mainly, and where the programs were very adventurous, where you had the repertoire pieces, but we had new music just side by side. Because that's important than not to put new music in a kind of ghetto. You know, yeah. that's only for these people. No, you have to mix, but you mix carefully. You have been asked this millions of times. Do you consider yourself a conductor who composes or a composer who conducts? I think I, I'm really, uh, I, I am a composer who, who yeah, conducts. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, the conducting came rather late in my life. You know, at first I was not at all involved in conducting. Uh, I was just involved in composing and I made a living with uh, conducting music for the theater. You know, that's all. And then uh, when I um, was organizing myself concerts of new music, uh, we had no money and uh, not much at, uh, at least. And I was the cheapest conductor. And uh, <laughs> so therefore, uh, I, I began to, to, uh, to conduct very small groups. And then I learned like that. And when I went to Germany, uh, progressively I was given more and more responsibility on conducting uh, concerts of new music. And then progressively, you know, I discovered myself this gift, which I did not know about, uh, practically. And uh, therefore, if the you... The gift to lead an orchestra. To lead an orchestra, yes. yes. Because that's a gift, like another one, which I never... Uh, I was not aware of it before, you know. And uh, then, also, I mean, if you do concerts, you cannot do only because the, the amount of uh, rehearsals is limited, and you cannot make programs only with 20th century music. So when I was asked, for instance, with the concert Gebar in Amsterdam to conduct, I had to learn the repertoire. So progressively, I did not discover this course because I, my education was really uh, with this historical background. But I mean, that was the first time I was confronted with conducting, uh, really, music of the past. Do you look back with great uh, uh, pleased that it happened to you, that you had the opportunity to, in a sense, give expression to talent that you clearly had, the ability to lead an orchestra, the ability to interpret music, the ability to, in a sense, leave your mark on a whole different arena. Well, I think first, that's, I mean, you know, I'm, uh, the only way for a composer, especially for a young composer, to make a living, that's because you have no commission practically right. at the yeah. beginning, so that's teaching. And I taught two years, and that was for me enough. <laughs> So therefore, <laughs> yes, I, I, I prefer much more to conduct because uh, that's much livelier. Yeah. So when you conduct, you transmit something directly. Teaching, for instance, uh, for me, I mean, I could not have gone for very long on that. And uh, therefore, I mean, for me, uh, to, to, to be able to transmit what I liked and to transmit that to, to a group of musicians, uh, that was really very rewarding. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I, I never uh, regretted, although sometimes, you know, when you are at the head of institutions, then it it uh, really is, uh, takes quite a lot of it, your it's time. It's draining you, of your time yes. for fundraising and appearances yes. and everything else. And your energy. Yeah. You know, and you your energy to, to, to compose to, and to, to, compose, yeah, to you dedicate to yourself to the music. Quiet. Therefore, now, you know, when I can choose everything what I want exactly, I <laughs> take some periods very uh, uh, precisely. And then, as I mean, the rest, I... I keep for my composing. Do you look back on the New York Philharmonic experience? Yes. As something you would, if you had your choice to do again, you would still do again? I think so. I think so. Think so. Yes, no, I think so. I think, uh, you know, the time was not easy, certainly. Right, right. Uh, you had some strong reactions against it. It's, I mean, uh, so you have to have solid nerves uh, for this time. <laughs> but uh, if you have decided to do it, you do it. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, uh, you are a coward, as I mean, uh, simply that. <laughs> you, uh, you can't be, to use a colloquialism, you can't be a conductor and be a shrinking violet, can you? No. You cannot, without a strong ego, you cannot lead an orchestra. Yes, as I mean, you have to have a personality, let's say. I prefer that's, uh, this uh, word to, to, yes. to uh, strong ego. No, uh, the ego is, of course, necessary, but not uh, um, ego personal. That's uh, a personality which goes with the music. As I mean, you are, you are there, there, so for me, in, uh, in my opinion, you are there to serve the music and to cooperate with the musicians and not to dominate. That's, for me, uh, the, uh, the, the great thing. 
Uh, I was giving an interview recently in Vienna because I conducted the Vienna Philharmonic, and I was asked, you know, what is uh, you know, the thing with, uh, with, uh, with an orchestra? What is your pleasure with music? I said, to receive and to give. That's an exchange. Because when you are young, precisely, you are, uh, especially uh, in my case, because I, as I say, I did not go to any school of conducting, mm -hmm. I was preoccupied uh, with the fact to make things right, you know. So you don't listen. You, you want always to give, to give, to give. And then finally, the more you go, the more you receive. Yeah. Because in these big orchestras, like the New York Philharmonic or like the Vienna Philharmonic, you have really very good musicians as first desks. You know, yeah, first yeah, clarinet, yeah, yeah, first yeah, flute, yeah, first, first, first violin, violin and right. so on. So you cannot consider that your personality is stronger than theirs. So, I mean, you have to, to coordinate things, but you have to respect the personality. And the most you do from, uh, with these personalities, the better it is. Did you, though, <laughs> I know you by what I read, not by personal experience, yes. you had a reputation for being a very volatile, saying what was on your mind, suffering fools not well, temperament. Well, also, I mean, uh, you know, if you say what you think, you are considered like somebody who, exceptional. Not at all. <laughs> also, I mean, you know, I, I don't choose always uh, uh, to, to say what I say. It depends from the circumstances. Yeah. If you have somebody in front of you who is very, uh, you know, obstinate, obnoxious and everything, you say, well, please, I have these ideas and I want to give these ideas, period. Is that, no, you that's, that's not the way you would say it, is it? No, as, I mean, I would say uh, some style, uh, in a stronger way. But, I mean, you know, I was attacked sometimes in very strong terms also. Yeah. So uh, I cannot really just stay quiet and uh, very pleased with this type of thing. So you react in function of what is uh, said about you or said to you. Uh, directly, but I mean, I don't look for aggressivity. No, I am not an aggressive person. I am aggressive person only under some circumstances. Yes. You know, when I am attacked for wrong reasons, especially, and I want to explain what I am uh, supposed to do. Uh, period. Do you believe, as as I think you do, that if you want to know you, listen to your music? Yes, certainly. Uh, don't look at my personality. My personality is not important. For me, uh, the important is the music you do, you compose, you write, or the music you perform. Uh, if people don't agree, I can accept that very easily, uh, because uh, certainly I am, you know, I have a vision, which is necessary if you want to do music or anything. As I mean, you have to have a personality and to, to, to uh, give your vision of things. If people don't agree with your vision, that's the right. Uh, so, I mean, I, I never objected to that. I never, I was never a, a polemicist from this point of view at all. Uh, simply when I was attacked, for instance, on the type of organization of music, of uh, what I think is uh, the music which is important and music which is less important, uh, then as I mean, I describe my tastes. Uh, you are not obliged to, to go with it, but I'm, I can really give my opinion, that's all. Mm. You are going very strong. You said you were just with the Vienna Philharmonic, but you're approaching your 75th birthday in the t year 2000, correct? Yes, absolutely. What would you like for the musical legacy of Pierre Boulez to be? Well, I would like uh, for me, that's, that's not so much the performances. The performances are transient. You know, that's just uh, something which happened uh, and you are happy sometimes. But I mean, that's not the main uh, fact in my life. I would like that my work survive my, myself, that's all. And so, I mean, I think that's a desire very common to uh, all artists. Uh, I am not exceptional in this case. Yes. I, mean. I have here two CDs. Tell me, th this is with the Chicago Symphony Orchestra, yes. Strauss, Mahler, uh, and others. Um, this just out, or? Not just out, yes. Yeah. Uh, that's in a recording we have done maybe two years ago, something yeah. like that. And this? And that's, that's my own work, Répon. Uh, which is for uh, electronics, I mean uh, instruments and electronics. And that's very difficult because uh, to, to, to not to listen to the recording, but I mean it was very difficult to, to do the recording because there is a kind of a space uh, division of the instruments. There are instruments in the middle, yeah. there are instruments around uh, which are amplified and uh, electronically treated. And that's of course that's very difficult to give this feeling of space, but I think we achieved that. Mm. You know? It, your passion really is of your time and the future. Yes. Future, I can maybe have a hint at the future because you can never really predict the future. You know, 50 years ago, if you would interview me and say, 
what you will do in, 90, in uh, 2000? I said, well, I have no idea, really. <laughs> as I, but uh, uh, so therefore, I'm not, uh, uh, you know, making prophecies, certainly not. But certainly, I, I, I have the feeling for what happens and what can be, uh, you know, uh, for, of some interest for the future. That's certainly that's the tendency of my life. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time.